it's that time of the year, folks. Let's talk about my top five favorite books of 2017. Innocence and in Death Innocence and in Death was a great read from a mystery standpoint. So good in fact that it made this list. However, it's also a sloppy love triangle. It's so bad that it placed it at the end of this list. I love the antagonist in this book. The, uh, the person committing the crime, we'll say. She's intimidating, really. I also love how you know it's her from the beginning, but it's still kind of a surprise when she gets arrested. One half of this novel is an amazing mystery, some of the best work that Nora Roberts has ever done. And yeah, this book was published under Nora Roberts' pen name, J.D. Robb. It's a part of the In-Depth series. I think there's like 40 of these books at this point. I might be wrong, but I've really enjoyed the ones that I've read, and I will likely continue to read books in the In-Depth series. The books in the In-Depth series. However, the other half of Innocence and Death is a schlocky romance. I don't want to give away too much, but I will say this. The love triangle actually worked until the last third. Eve and Rourke have a heart-to-heart, -heart, and that should have been the end of it. They sit down, they talk about Eve's jealousy, they talk about the fact that Rourke's not going to leave her. Eve has a very scarred past, she dealt with a lot of abuse, and so she has a fear of losing what's close to her, and that's understandable. They have their heart-to-heart, -heart, their relationship is stronger for the experience, that's where this stupid fucking love triangle should have ended. Instead, the other bitch, Magdalene, or Magdalene, or Maggie, stays in the picture, and the book ends with some huge unnecessary blow-up. Magdalene tries to frame Rourke, and it's a petty mess. It's almost like I'm reading two different books at times. Like, every time the romance comes up, it pulls me right out of the mystery. But the mystery is really, really good. It sounds like I hate this book, but I don't. It's actually, like I said, pretty damn good. I'm gonna go ahead and give this book a B. She and her cat. Mangas aren't exempt from this list, and I've read quite a few this year. She and Her Cat, by Makoto Shinkai and illustrated by Tsuba Yamaguchi, is based on a 1999 short film made by Shinkai. This is the story of a cat named Chobi, who is adopted by a young woman. The story is told through the cat's eyes, and you can tell from the beginning that his owner struggles with some depression and familial issues. However, it's left up to the reader's interpretation due to the fact that you only know as much as the cat. The writer has been compared to Miyazaki, and I can see why. He has an illustrious career and recently directed the anime movie Your Name, which is the highest profiting anime movie of all time so far. This is a one-shot manga about depression and acceptance told through the eyes of a cat. She and her cat gets an A-. Gerald's Game. I love me some Stephen King, and I love me some character study. This book is a lot like The Girl Loved Tom Gordon, except much longer and much more disturbing. Jessie and her husband go away to their getaway cabin, and Jessie allows herself to be handcuffed to the bed during sex. Then her husband dies of a heart attack, leaving her to languish. The entire story is told inside of her head, where you learn of the abuse she endured at the hands of her father and her lifelong regrets. As I said, I love character studies, and Jessie is haunted not only by her past, but by a creepy apparition that may be appearing due to her dehydration, or because of something else. On top of that, she comes to terms with the fact that she was nothing more than a trophy wife married to a lawyer. I really loved this book. If I had any complaint, I'll say that I felt like the ending was a little misplaced, but it wasn't enough to put me off. I'm gonna go ahead and give Gerald's Game an A. I Am Madam X. A fictional biography about Virginie Gatreau, this book is about a French-American woman who was the centerpiece for a very famous painting. Very little is known about her, so author Gioa Deliberto gives us a rather believable fictional portrayal of a woman who is incredibly flawed, incredibly vain, but relatable. 
This is another one of those books that I don't want to talk too much about because it's an experience. You feel like you're right there throughout. You feel Virginia's heartbreak, you feel her joy and her pain. The environments are beautifully painted, and this story about a woman whose promiscuity made her famous was so good I didn't want it to end. This is based on a real person, and like I said, very little is known about her. The author admits that the story is fictionalized, but who cares? The book is amazing. I'm gonna give I Am Madam X an A. And before I tell you my number one pick for best book of 2017, here are a few honorable mentions. And stay tuned, I do have my top five worst and my number books one of, 2017. Book of 2017. Should be out within the next couple of days. Where are the lilies Because bloom, as we all know, Bill with me, and Vera Cleaver. What's a little positivity I have without a lot of respect for people who can write negativity. children's fiction. I'll see you guys then. Mostly because I can't. I've tried, and I can't. It takes a lot of talent to inspire children. Where the Lilies Bloom follows Mary Call, a young 14-year-old girl who takes over the role as head of the house after her father, Roy Luther, passes away. The way I see it, this book touches on topics of pride, loss, and acceptance of help. Mary and her siblings ended up in their situation because their father refused to seek medical help due to his distrust of doctors. Ultimately, his pride killed him. Mary takes after her father in a way, and throughout the book refuses help from others. However, when she's at her limit, and the landlady shows up saying they have 48 hours to hit the bricks, she caves and ends up seeking help from her sister's fiancé. The book ends with Mary saying basically that there is no God. She is so tired and worn out that she has given up hope. Keep in mind, this was published in the early to mid-60s, and that was a ballsy thing to say in that time. I really love Mary Call. I love her drive, I love how hard she works, I love that she's flawed, and I also love that even though she says that there's no hope and that she's worn out, you can still sense that there is a little hope left in her. She may have had to grow up young, but there's still that little glimmer of something inside of her soul. This story is amazing. It's a lost gem. Hell, the book was turned into a movie that was also forgotten. I can't think of any real problems with it. It's one of those stories that deserves a second wind. People need to read this. And, of course, Where the Lilies Bloom gets an A+. And stay tuned, I do have my top five worst books of 2017. Should be out within the next couple of days. Because, as we all know, with me, what's a little positivity without a little bit of negativity? I'll see you guys then.